Hello everyone, welcome uh, to Wind Down uh, Friday. Today, our special guest is uh, Bob White, Embedded Power Labs uh, President and Chief Engineer. Hi Bob, welcome aboard. Hey, welcome Mauricio, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thanks a lot for, for being here. How's it going? Where are you located, Bob? Um, I am in the United States. I'm in the uh, Denver area, so in Colorado, very lovely state with the mountains and Nice. Yeah. Nice place. So, Bob, thank you for this opportunity. So, I have prepared a couple of questions to share with you. So, let's start uh, uh, to with, with my first question. So, I would like, we, we would like to know more about your career, your background. So, you have had an incredible journey from uh, MIT in 1980 to launching uh, uh, your, your company, as I mentioned, Embedded Power Labs. So, why power electronics? What initially drew you to power electronics? So actually, my, my career in electronics started before I went to MIT. Leaving high school, we didn't have money for college. Mm -hmm. And I, enlist, I enlisted in the U.S. Air Force and was trained in electronics uh, and long-haul communications, microwave communications. Um, eventually made my way to MIT where I was originally interested in like, electromagnetics and fields and ended up doing my bachelor thesis in the power, in the power lab, uh, uh, working with Professor Kirtley on a uh, generator with a superconducting uh, rotor. And that's where I met Professor Kasakian. And I did a project lab with him and I took the power electronics class. It was a graduate class, even though I was an undergraduate. And it just clicked for me. Uh, and I got a perfect score on the final exam. It's probably the only exam in MIT I got a perfect score. But it was just like, I get this. I get this. Um, and then Professor Kasakin invited me to join um, a special graduate seminar the next semester in power electronics. Um, and then I did a summer intern engineer at General Electric, where I designed a little flyback converter. The thing that about power electronics, like, especially like over the electromagnetics, it's very real. It's very hands-on. Um, and you need to know a lot about a lot. So you, you've got to know the circuits. You've got to know the devices. You've got to know magnetics. You have to know controls. You have to know thermal management. You have to know EMI. You have to know safety. You have to know the mechanical engineer. Um, that just appealed to me. And, and the real hands-on physical nature um, and there was just something about taking that class. I, it just clicked. I just got it. So I, f I found my calling. Good, good. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. And uh, so you have worked with uh, so a wide range of uh, clients, companies, uh, uh, people. So what are the most uh, common power design uh, challenges uh, uh, companies uh, bring to you today? Well, uh, so as an independent consultant, Mm -hmm. um, and, and a small solo guy, um, I get a lot of more specialized um, requests. Mm -hmm. People that need, for example, a, a specialized power supply that they're not going to buy off the shelf. There's so much that's off the shelf today. Um, but And I leverage that. So if somebody comes to me and says, I need a custom ACDC power supply, I, I don't design that from scratch. Uh, from beginning, because the cost, I mean, if they need 100 units or 500 units, the cost of the EMI and safety qualification would swamp their production costs. So I take the approach, let's buy an off-the-shelf power supply, 12 volts, 24, 48 volts, and I'll design a bunch of DC and DC converters to give them the particular outputs they need. So just in general, here's an example. A few years ago, a company approached me uh, they, they make devices to weld plastic pipe. Hmm. So it, it's used, and, and the pipe has a wire embedded in the end of the, and they put the pipes together, and they run a current through the wire, and it melts the plastic, and it welds it. And they needed very precise control of voltage, current, and power all. Okay. And, it needed, and it needed to be programmable. So I bought a, a, a two-kilowatt off-the-shelf 48-volt power supply, I, I built a buck controller 
married it up to a microchip PIC-16 with lots of analog peripherals. They built a Bluetooth interface and communicated by serial bus to that PIC. And so they had an app that somebody could use on a phone to control the power supply from the phone over Bluetooth to weld the pipe. I mean, that's not something, and then, you know, they were, they were going to make dozens of these, not thousands, but that's the kind of specialized work that, that I do a lot of. Nice, nice. Yeah. So you, you teach power electronics lab for students, for master's students. So we are talking about university. Uh, so a big, a big issue, so a big issue, an issue that uh, so always uh, is uh, is a, a discussion in terms of uh, uh, meeting is uh, the gap in terms of uh, academia and in terms of industry needs. So how can we uh, better bridge the gap between uh, university, academia, uh, courses, of course, and industry needs? So what advice uh, would you give uh, to students that uh, so who struggle to move from theory to practical uh, thinking? You know, and, and that's very real. I mean, I, I, I would teach these students and their second year master students and, and they struggled with some, you know, just basic design. And mm. because the, the colleges teach analysis, they don't teach synthesis. They don't, they don't teach how to create and build things. You know, they can analyze circuits very well. Give them a problem, they can solve it. And so that was part of what I, you know, that was one of the reasons that the University of Colorado started this project lab was to try and build that, uh, teach them how to design, how to create, right? Now, schools have a lot of things. They have capstone projects, right? Um, I think for young engineers today, even be before college, one of the things that excites me is the robotics programs from Lego Mindstorms to FIRST, to these various robotics, because That, that to me is where, I mean, I grew up with things like erector sets and tinker toys, you know, building things. For today, these engineers exploring robotics that brings together everything. It brings together the embedded systems. It brings together the power. It brings together the mechanical. And it brings together building a physical thing that you have to build and make work. So, um That to me is, is pretty encouraging. I, I would encourage like, you know, young engineers um, explore that because um, it's going to give you a wide exposure and it's going to teach you those lessons of how to build and make something that actually has to work, right? That's the, so the robotics is really, the robotics programs for young people are really exciting for me. Yeah, I agree, I agree, thank you. So having seen several generations of uh, engineers, so, There are, are there any particular recurring challenges that you have noticed, technical, professional, mindset related, or others? Well, so, so we are, this, this whole, uh, entering this whole new digital world. Right? Mm. I, I, in my career, I did a lot of power supplies for computers, telecom equipment, ushering in this digital world. And that was exciting. I mean, I think, I think that, you know, those of us that created these, the computers, you know, ranging from mainframes to your phone have done a lot to change the world. For the young engineers today, the challenge I think is decarbonizing the economy and power electronics engineers are going to be crucial to that. Whether it's the electrification of transportation ranging from like, personal mobility, whether it's a scooter or a vehicle, to transport vehicles, to railroads, to even electric aircraft. Um, decarbonizing the generation and transmission um, of power, for, you know, incorporating the renewable energy. So, you know, my generation of engineers brought us this digital world. Hmm. Power, I, to, I'm excited for young power electronics engineers. This decarbonizing there's a there is so much to be done and so much potential benefit to the world i mean these engineers these young engineers today going forward can make a real difference to improve the world so i'm excited for them i'm excited for their opportunity i'm excited for the for the opportunities and challenges they're going to have 
And this is my yeah. favorite yeah. topic, decarbonization. So power electronics is a is an important topic for that. So we, you can yeah. have AI, but uh, if you don't have power supply, probably. And so, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, young engineers today, I am so excited for you. You know, your opportunities, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. So let's talk about PM Bus. So you are the original creator of PM Bus. Now you are working, uh, please correct me, on a new version of uh, 1.5 with the security features and so on. So what inspired the creation of PM Bus? How has it uh, evolved over the years? So tell me, tell us more. So, so yeah, so the PM Bus power management protocol um, started in 2004. There was a lot of digital power work going on. A lot of companies were creating these protocols. Every OEM, like a Cisco and mm -hmm. IBM, had their own protocol. And, and we were in this, like, uh, babble situation. Nobody could communicate. And I was asked by my company, Artisan, to create a protocol for Artisan. And, and I was working on this because I had done some work on this area back when I worked for a computer company. And, and I realized nobody's going to use this. Right? Um, I can make this. Nobody's going to use it. What we need, what I, what, I, what I realize is we need a common standard because it doesn't matter the power supply, what pattern of ones and zeros means turn on or turn off. But if we could all talk the same language, we could, we could, we could move on. I mean, we could focus on the, the efficiency and the, and the power conversion density. Um, and the other thing that was happening, because everybody had their own protocol, no chip maker could make a chip. And if we all had the same language, people would start making chips and really make it cheaper. And that's how we launched, that's how the idea for PM Bus got started. We're now 20, 20 years later, we're on revision 1.5. We're adding um, very high levels of security, even to the point of like quantum proof security. Uh, that's going to be released um, really within the next couple of weeks. I'm doing some of the final edits now. Okay. Um, now, PM Bus has always worked over the SM Bus protocol. Okay. And and so the next generation that we're talking about, it's not going to come quickly. But how do we manage this, move this power management protocol onto a wide range of transports, wireless, you know, you know, wireless uh, transports. Uh, where somebody could manage server power, again, like with an app on their phone over Bluetooth, right? Right. Um, how can we manage it over, over Ethernet? How can we manage it over USB, I, I3C? So um, it's had a very great run, but now the PM bus committee is looking forward to how do we move this protocol into a wide range of transports and uh, make it expand the use. So looking forward, uh, Bob, so you mentioned decarbonization. So are there any big ideas or future projects, wide band gap, AI, or others you would like uh, to work on next? Well, as I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on the verge of winding down towards something I'll call retirement. Um, I, so um, I'm... I, I work um, with some of the white band gap and, you know, I'll continue to use those as appropriate, but um, I, I don't see myself edging into retirement now, like, like doing some of the power spies that the server power spies today are so incredible. I mean, the power efficiency conversions, you know, efficiency is up of 98, 99%, right? That's not something I as a solo guy can do. That takes a real dedicated team. Right. Those days are behind. Those are, you know, I'm excited young engineers can do that. Those days are behind me. So I'll keep serving my clients. Um, I, I'll keep being involved in activities like APEC, the IEEE, PM Bus, volunteer work. So I think that my contributions will be more in trying to share my expertise through those kinds of activities uh, and, and whatever way I can, mentoring young engineers. Um, I, I think that's how I can make uh, the best contribution using my, you know, going forward, you know, rather than designing the greatest new power slide, let me help the younger engineers do that work. You know, let me, let me share my expertise and, Good. and pass that along. Yeah. Good. This is important. Thanks. So yeah. Bob, we, we are in conclusion. I have the last one uh, as uh, the philosophy of wind down Friday. I would like uh, to know more beyond 
uh, job beyond work. So any hobbies that, uh, so how do you recharge your batteries? Just talking about power. Well, um, I mean, I, 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 I do get a lot from the various volunteer work, you know, IEEE, APEC, PM bus. Um, you know, my, my wife is also retired. Um, I, I do pay a lot of attention to world events and history. I mean, there's so much going on in the world that it's important. Um, we're here, you know, we're taking care of our home. Uh, one thing we enjoy is I took cooking classes some years ago. And so we do a lot of our own cooking. I mean, I can make better food cheaper than most restaurants. Right. Uh, it's just, you know, to eat, you know, um, And so we, we try, we, we like exploring some different things. There's, there's some cuisines that we will still like um, are a little bit beyond this, but we, we try and explore new and healthier foods and uh, better, you know, new ingredients, new, new flavors. Um, again, because we can make better food for ourselves and cheaper than most restaurants, right? So that's a, a that little bit of that. And we're taking care of our home. We're, we're doing some, We're doing some uh, upgrades and projects uh, around the house, around the landscaping. So, um, Good. so yeah, I, I, I keep very busy. I, I keep very busy. Good. So, thank you, Bob. It has been super. Right. It has been a pleasure to talk with you. Uh, oh, thank you. Pleasure too. Pleasure. So, and uh, so I wish you a great weekend and stay in touch. Thank you, Bob. All right. All right. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Bye.